What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Trench Grenade channel. I am your host, the dry fire and the air conditioning enjoyer that your mom said that we have at home. Today, we're going to be discussing the cornerstone of you to be effective with your handgun or rifle, um, both for competition and real world applications. The drink for today's video, guys, is going to be a rain so we can get motivated and actually get caffeinated. So, cheers. All right, guys. So, before we continue, Huge shout out, the sponsor of today's video is going to be Magpul. If you need slings, uh, ways to outfit your weapon, okay, or good magazines, or just some cool merch, go over to Magpul, Super Base. Thank you for sponsoring the channel. Every time you buy something from them, I get a small kickback. It helps me get motivated to make more videos for y'all. Okay, guys, so the reason we're doing a dry fire video today instead of out on the range shooting the AUG, which you can probably see here in the background, is... I forgot to freaking register some time at the range. So we're going to remake a video that I made when I first made the channel. And that is going to be how to dry fire, okay? So the purpose of dry fire. Guys, dry fire, for not to insult anyone's intelligence, is simply uh, practicing drawing your handgun or rifle, okay? Presenting it on the target and seeing how your grip, how, uh, seeing how your grip, feeling how your grip will be, seeing how your sights will look, and actually practice engaging that first round on the target and then as you build up you can set par times with a shot timer or set up multiple targets and practice transitioning between targets and eventually it will give you the the raw muscle motor skills to enable you to become a better shooter and hopefully be able to compete faster or just enable you to use your weapon to protect yourself and those around you more efficiently okay some ground rules so before you dry fire the very first thing you must do is clear all magazines that are going to be present in the room and have them double checked with a buddy. That way you obviously do not have a negligent discharge because how many people have been killed with a quote unquote unloaded weapon? The answer is a lot. Okay, guys, this weapon is clear and my battle buddy has double checked all my magazines to ensure that they are unloaded. Okay, guys, the next thing you're going to need is one of these. This is a packed timer, okay? To be successful when dry firing, you're going to need a shot timer. It doesn't need to be a packed timer. Just go and get one. Uh, the big blue ones, okay? Those ones work too, but I like the packed timer just because I know how to quickly and efficiently set the part time, and that way you can record your scores, and for dry fire purposes, you can track your performance. The next piece of equipment you're gonna need is some very expensive military grade painter's tape. That way, when you're indoors and you're actually using your dry fire pack timer, it's not crazy loud and you don't blow your eardrums out and your wife doesn't kick you out of the house. Okay, guys, once you have your shot timer taped up, okay, uh, just simply tape it up around where the sound will come out. Tape up your targets. The targets can be anything. Now, with that being said, stop aiming at doorknobs and stuff like that. Try to set up a target. That will give you a finite point of aim. Like this old M9, or as I was, M4 uh, zero target. As you can see on this zero target, there's a hard break and multiple points of aim. For today's purposes, we're going to use where the diagonal lines and the solid black meet, just to show you all kind of what uh, we're working with. And it will give me a consistent point of aim. Once you have your target set up and you have double, triple check that your weapon system that you're going to be dry firing with is unloaded, well, now you can begin dry firing. The first step to dry firing is going to be presentation from the holster. And I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you right now. So the easiest way to practice presentation, go ahead and set your timer. And right here is where I want you to stop. And what I've done here, uh, that second beep is three seconds. We're going to get into that in a second, guys. That is what, what we're going to call can't miss speed. But all we're practicing on step one, okay, so write this down. If you or taking notes, write this down. Step one, you st start your timer from a neutral position and simply practice disengaging. Okay, all you're doing is disengaging that safety device on your holster, getting a proper grip. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more times. Give you a side view, I guess. Okay. All I'm doing is get a, getting a high grip on the pistol with my dominant hand and moving my left hand or non-dominant hand to a position that I can further support the handgun should I get that far. 
Okay, guys, that is going to be step one, is simply getting a positive grip high on your weapon. Okay, the weapon we're using today is a Beretta M9A4. So step one is getting a positive high grip and disengaging whatever retention device you have on your holster. If you have no retention device on your holster, all you're doing is simply getting a high grip and this is going to be condition or step one, okay? So step one is simply ensuring that you can unholster safely, okay? Step two is going to be unholstering and meeting your non-firing hand center of body. Now, a lot of guys are going to argue on the internet about this. If you need to meet for your training farther out as the handgun comes up, that's fine. But what I don't want you to do is one of these. This is what I don't want you to do. Okay, that is not what I want you to do. What I want you to do is find a consistent position that you're going to meet your weapon as it comes up that is not going to flag your non-firing hand and that is not going to be all wild and just meeting it out in space. So one more time. Condition, position one, position two, okay? And don't overthink it, guys. If you have been trained that you want to immediately grab the weapon down here, okay, as long as it is a consistent hinge point for your non-firing hand to meet that weapon and as it comes out, okay? So position two is simply going to be where your firing hand and non-firing hand meet. Now, Trench, how do I want my firing hand and non-firing hand to meet? Well, I'm going to show you. You want your firing hand as high up on the weapon Okay, as you can get it, and make sure if you're using a Beretta-style pistol that that firing thumb is not going to be uh, impacting that safety. And you want thumbs forward, so non-firing hand on front of the firing hand and a thumbs forward grip. And hopefully I can demonstrate this for you all on camera, but firing hand is high up on the pistol as you can get it. Non-firing hand on the front, thumbs forward grip, okay, presenting and pointing towards the target with a natural uh, aim, okay? All right, guys. So... Let's recap what we've talked about so far. You're going to need a shot timer. You're going to need some painter's tape. You're going to need a good quality target, preferably more than one, okay, taped up. And you're going to need a handgun that is unloaded with a battle buddy to check all your magazines, the belt setup that you're going to use. If you're practicing or dry firing for home defense, then you need to have your home defense set up. For demonstration purposes, I have an overt carry or duty belt carry set up here just to demonstrate for y'all. After all your stuff is clear, First thing you're going to do is set your set your shot timer and then practice uh, position one, which is just simply unholstering and defeating that retention device. After you get through position one, you're going to work through to position two. Position two is simply meeting your non-firing hand wherever you've been trained, hand on front, uh, non-firing hand on front of your firing hand, thumbs forward, and bringing that muzzle onto the target as fast as you can, but not wildly bringing that on, not wildly bringing the muzzle on the target like this. Okay. You're simply, without overthinking it, going to defeat the retention device, meet your non-firing hand, and start to present that handgun forward. This is position two. Position three is simply everything from position two to where you have your sights aligned. Now, guys, keep in mind, going from position two to position three, watch the rise of my muzzle. From here, I'm driving out and finding that front sight or red dot onto the target. So it should be like a bridge. I'll go one more time, super slow. Watch my muzzle. As I'm meeting, I'm driving out, trying to find that front sight and driving the sights to the target. But you don't want to punch out, okay? You're simply just bringing the gun up naturally. So that way you're developing that front sight post on the target faster. And you want that front sight post to be clear and the target blurry, okay? Do not get target fixated. And don't if you have a red dot, do not get dot fixated. Simply look at the target, the dot will come there or the side will come there, but you want the front sight to be crisp and the target to be blurry, okay? Again, if you have a dot, do not get fixated on that dot. Look at the target and as you present the dot will align there. All right, guys. So, now that you have hopefully your draw for reholster it's important you don't get in such a big hurry for dry fire that you do one of these. Bang, bang, and then you just slam it back in the holster. What you want to do for reholstering, okay, for reholstering, simply draw the handgun, position one, position two, position three, you fight through, okay? I would develop a method of topping the handgun off, resecuring, 
rescaling back in and then down. That is what I do for me. You need to develop your own SOP and based on your unit's needs or your dry firing needs. So as you go through, get a good sight picture, okay? Realize the fight is over, secure that old mag, new mag in, reholster, reassess, back in, and then simply reholster, okay? You need to develop your SOP. What I don't want you to do is one of these. Do not do this. You're fighting, you do what you need to do, okay? And then you just simply slam that thing back into the holster because now you're putting your, your lifeline back in the holster without a topped off magazine. Okay, guys? Nothing discussed in today's video should be taken as legal advice or as a substitute for legal advice. Always remember the four rules of firearm safety. Treat your weapon as if it is loaded at all times. Keep your finger straight off the trigger until you're ready to engage. Be aware of your target and its surroundings and never point your weapon at anything you don't intend to destroy. The Discord server is live. Get in there, get some gaming buddies and some buddies to train with. The Patreon is live. It is the only source of funding for the channel. It, if, if you're interested in it, get over there and check out the Patreon. We could sure use your help. Thanks. All right, guys, we're going to do a quick drink break, and then we're just going to do a quick check on learning before we move on to um, actually engaging and transitioning. So cheers, guys. Okay, so... What was position one? Position one was simply reholstering and getting that proper grip with that firing hand. Position two, okay, was simply meeting your firing hand with your non-firing hand and driving that handgun as flat as you can onto the target. What was position three? Position three is simply fighting, okay? Position three is simply fighting, okay? And then once the fight is over, you go back to position two, secure a new source of feed, old one out, new one in, you can put it in your dump pouch or in your magazine pouch, whatever your SOP is. Make sure before you reholster that the fight is actually over. There is no rush to put the handgun away. I'm going to say that again. There is no rush to take the one thing you have in the fight and to rush back, try to rush through this, okay? There is no rush from here. Right now I have my weapon out. I can continue fighting. I can, I can move. I can do whatever I need to do. There is no rush to getting your, your weapon out of the fight because you are now dictating the fight. Because once the weapon's in the fight, keep it in the fight until the fight is actually over, okay? Now, I wanted to clarify one thing, because um, I may have confused some people as the dogs freak out. I may have confused some people on the difference between shooting a red dot sight and shooting a, a iron sights on a handgun. So, what I have been trained is, as I draw my handgun that has a red dot sight or a green dot in this particular case, Okay, with this Shadow Systems DR920L, I am going to be target focused. Okay, I'll say again, target focused when using a red dot sight. Okay, and what that's going to do as my grip presents itself and as the draw presents itself, the dot will appear on the center of the target. Whereas with iron sights, I want to be front sight focused or uh, front sight focused, and the front sight post should be crisp and the target should be blurry. Why is that? I have been taught that's going to give me a more finite point of aim with my iron sights, okay, and that for the red dot, if you're using a red dot, you're not going to get so dot focused that you're doing one of these games, okay, trying to find the, the dot, all right? So just to clarify on that, if you're using iron sights on your handgun or your rifle, get target focused, okay, and if, or as you were, if you're using iron sights, front sight focus, red dot, is target focus okay so do not get confused on the two as i'm trying to clarify that all right guys so remember as you have the weapon up don't rush back simply get the gun back in the fight either secure it back in the mag pouch or in the freaking dump pouch whatever the sop is keep that weapon in the fight until it's actually over and then reholster all right guys don't be in a rush to reholster that is where negligent discharges happen and that is where you take your weapon out of the fight before the fight's actually over okay now that we have talked about the actual draw process itself, oh, one more thing, non-firing hand on the front, thumbs forward grip. All right, so now moving on to actually transitioning. So guys, I have a mirror set right here so you can see the two targets behind me and I can see it just like you're seeing it. So let's just go through at can't miss speed. I'm gonna aim at the, the target on my left. It'll probably be the target on your right. So here we go, natural grip. Okay, so a little shaky. And we're just going to work it through, and I'm just going to kind of talk about what's going on, okay, with the dry fire. I am using a double action trigger, so just natural grip, okay. 
high grip. There we go. Okay. So the benefits of having a double action, single action is you get a lot of practice on that double action pull, guys. Let's go again. Well, that's talking. Okay. Let's go again. Okay. Just trying to make sure I'm under my can't miss speed time. And as you're dry firing, you can rotate your mags back in from your dump pouch. Okay, guys. Let's go a couple more times here. Draw the handgun. There we go. Felt good. Top that handgun off. Keep it working for you. Okay, make sure the fight's over and then reholster. All right, guys, and as you build up through this, you can incorporate a transition, okay? You can incorporate a transition, then a reload, then a transition back. I'm going to show you what a full drill would look like here. Hopefully, we haven't lost audio and hopefully, we have not lost video. Here we go, guys. And what you can do. is set the timer for a part time that way so for this drill if i had a let's say two seconds per engagement so one two one two reload one two one two i could set it for two four six eight maybe ten maybe i want the whole drill to be over in ten seconds and let's see if that's realistic guys one ten seconds okay let's see what I'm, the drill is going to be two rounds per target, a reload, two rounds per target. Here we go. Ooh, okay. So second, uh, you'll, you'll all will be able to see at home better than I will. So the second round fired on the left target, I jerked, <clears throat> I jerked it a little bit. So let's slow down a little bit here. Okay, a little slow on the mag stowage, okay? I need a, because I'm using a mirror for the video purposes, and I'm, this is an excuse, if I suck, I suck, right? Because I'm using the mirror, I when I couldn't find it, I started looking at myself in the mirror instead of looking at the targets, which you do not want to look, use a mirror for your actual dry fire. Obviously, I'm doing it for YouTube purposes, but you want to stay target, uh, front side focused, okay? And don't be looking at yourself, right, as you're trying to reholster because you want it, you're not going to have a freaking uh, a mirror in combat, right? So, <clears throat> all right, guys, I was about to upload this video and I forgot to mention one of the most important things about dry fire is practicing your tap rack bang or your emergent, uh, immediate action drills or your remedial action drills. It's going to be pretty simple. Obviously, make sure the weapon's clear. I'll just put this in this little portion in right before we talk about transitions. So all you're going to do on the beep, engage, engage, okay? Pretend like you get a click, bang, bang, pull one out, move one in, and re-engage, re-engage. Okay, one more time. This is why you want a lot of magazines on you guys. I'll just do it with the beep. Maybe. Here we go. Okay. Engage, engage, tap, rack, slide off, hold mag out, move mag in, engage, engage. Okay. And just work it just like that, guys. And again, you can set a part time for your uh, drill. So we'll say, how long do we think it should take us? No more than what? Probably five seconds. So we'll set this to five. All right, let's try this. So we'll do up, up one, two rounds, slap, rack, out one, and one round. Okay, here we go. Okay, now, and we're not even going to cut that out. So what just happened here is my Beretta mag, and I've never had this happen with a Glock mag, my Beretta mag just ejected o itself into, and I'll go grab the base plate, into the next dimension. So what do you think is going to happen if that mag still had ammo in it in real life if I dropped that magazine 
right, on, on a hard surface. Let's see if we can simulate that again. For those that didn't see it, okay, this Beretta mag just exploded on the floor. Let's see if we can get that to simulate that again. Okay, a little slow. I was also kind of focused on that mag to see if it would break. Let's try this again. I forgot the drill. Okay, let's, let's actually focus here. Let's focus. Okay, barely on that last one. But guys, this is why you want to train because if you drop your magazine on the ground and it ejectocetos the entire thing and falls apart on a hard surface with no ammo in it, what do you think it's going to do in real life? Like that. Okay, so that is twice in a row, and we'll figure out which one this is. One second while I find my magazine components here. All the Glock fanboys in the chat right now are going to be like, and that's why I run Glock. Okay, so as we have dog hair all over this mag now. So what we learned today is Beretta mags do not like hard surfaces when dropped. Thankfully, they're very quick to reassemble, but I'm reloading the same way I would my Glocks, which is if there's any resistance at all, I'm simply, um, I'm simply gonna, you know, apply a little bit of downward pressure. So let's try this again, guys. See if we can get it to happen again. Okay, a little slow. And here, I'll show y'all. This is all gonna go in the video. Let's try this again. And that's why you want to tuck it right there, guys. Sometimes they get stuck, then they get dirty, and you don't want to practice bad habits, right? One more time. Okay. So, we're going to get you all back to the transition portion of the video, but now you know Beretta mags, when they hit the ground, they like to eject acido themselves from existence. one and here it happened almost again all right guys enjoy the rest of the video cheers transitioning let's talk about transitioning from targets so guys when you have, when you're on target right here, okay, let's say I fire this one. I want my eyes and then my gun, eyes and then my gun, eyes and then my gun, eyes and then my gun. What that's going to prevent is over travel between the two targets. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the outside of one of the targets and the outside of the other target to show you what it would look like just a transition between. What you're trying to prevent, guys, is that over travel. Because if I go gun at the same time, gun at the same time as my eyes, you're going to have a little bit of over travel. Whereas if you just practice going from one spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot, you're going to have less over travel. And obviously, it'll be exacerbated if I'm going from here over there and drive the gun over here and drive the gun over here and then drive the gun, right? It's going to be. The farther the weapon has to travel between points is going to be <clears throat> more exaggerated. If you're driving the gun and the eyes at the same time, or the eyes and then the gun, think about if you're driving the, if I'm driving the eyes, right? So eyes and then the gun, it's going to stop at a hard point. Whereas if I take both at the same time, I'm going to go past that point and then back. And hopefully I'm illustrating that point and demonstrating that point uh, clearly enough for everybody. And I'll try to, I'm going to go from this point right here. Uh, to this pillow over here just to try to demonstrate. Okay, it's kind of hard to demonstrate indoors, guys, but I think you get the point. Make sure you drive the eyes, then the gun, then, then, 
then the eyes, then the gun, then the eyes, then the gun, okay? And if it's an extreme turn like that, you want to make sure you're not traveling past that point by bringing both at the same time and then having to drive back. Okay, I think we beat a dead horse with transitionings there. Okay, guys. So, in summary, for dry fire. Oh, one more point I wanted to say before we move on. Uh, targets, just make sure you have a target that is consistent for you so you can practice using it, okay? Um, so, uh, how often should you dry fire? I'm going to say around four to five times a week, 30 minutes a dry fire session. You can simply, excuse me, set a timer on your phone or whatever for 30 minutes, just uninterrupted, and you can work, it, work on the basics, hit the basics all week, or you can build up to transitions, to reloads, everything. And by the end of it, and as you go through your dry fire journey, you'll be more comfortable and confident with your weapon. Additionally, make sure you're not just practicing with your duty setup. Make sure you're practicing with your concealed carry and your duty setup. Because if you're competing all the time, that's that's cool, but make sure you're actually dry firing with your carry gun as well, guys. Okay, hopefully I articulated all the things I wanted to articulate in this video. I'm not gonna cut any of it out. If there's weird stuff, cool, sharp shoot me in the comments, that's fine. Um, guys, thanks for being here. Huge shout out to Magpul. Guys, use the link below, go down there. They have cool merch. They got awesome slings. They got magazines. They got all kinds of furniture that you can put on your weapons, vertical grips, you name it, guys. They even got freaking sunglasses. So get down there, check out Magpul. Huge shout out to them. Thank you for being the sponsor of the channel, as well as the Patreon, guys. The Patreon is $5 a month. It gets you access to the Discord server where you can find buddies to train with and to game with. All right, guys, that's going to sum up the video. I'll do one more dry fire for you, and then we're going to get you all back to whatever you're doing. Okay, need to work on those trigger pulls, okay? Let's do one more. Need to work on those trigger pulls, work on those transitions. There we go. All right, guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know how you dry fire and how often you're dry firing down in the comments. And let me know what TTPs and SOPs you use for your dry fire sessions. Till next time. This is going to be Trench Grenade signing out. Check out the Magpul link below. It greatly helps the channel. Cheers.